Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In this video, I want to continue working on this Autodesk model engine project. The last time I did a video series on this, you saw me do the modeling cam tool pathing and run the part on the machine for the cylinder. Next, I want to work on the cylinder head, which mounts to the cylinder. And I think what I'll do is I'll throw the print up for the cylinder head on screen right now so we can take a look at what we see. If you look at it, you'll see that it's the overall shape and dimensions they are the same as the cylinder I see some hole features I see a revolve feature or two I see some recessed cuts for where the fastener head is gonna mount down into the cylinder head and I also see a fair amount of symmetry on here so we'll probably be using tools like mirror or patterns as we go and so let's jump back over into fusion and now we'll start a new design file and start working on modeling this part. First thing I'm gonna do is hit the save button and I'm gonna call this file cylinder head and I'll hit save. I got a lot of emails, a handful anyway, asking me why I created a component when I created the cylinder in the last video. And that's because unless I'm 100% sure that I'm not gonna need any other geometry such as soft jaws or a fixture plate that I'm gonna put in here or um, something like a vise that I'm gonna use, then I like to work with components. And in this video, I'm gonna do the same. So from the create menu, I'm gonna choose to create a new component. And the component name is also going to be cylinder head. And I'll hit okay. And to start out with, from the assemble menu, I'm gonna do an as-built joint. I'll do an as-built rigid joint between the cylinder head and the origin. When I hit OK, I see that joint symbol appear. I can either turn off the joints folder or I can expand the joints folder and just turn off that rigid joint there so I don't see it anymore. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. And the command I want to use is the rectangle. Now, I only have a two-point rectangle pinned to my toolbar, so let me show you a little trick you can do rather than going to create rectangle and then center rectangle. I'm just going to choose the two-point rectangle. And from the sketch palette, I'm going to choose the center rectangle option. Now I can lock on to the origin. And I can type out the size of the part that I want. In Y, it's going to be 1.875. Then I can hit my tab key to get to the other field. And in width, it's going to be 2.375. I can enter to lock that in. I'll finish my sketch. And now I can either press, pull, or extrude. Those are really the same command in this instance. And I'll start the extrude, and it finds that profile. And now I can type in a thickness of 0.275. I'll hit OK. Just like when I modeled the cylinder, I'm gonna add the fillets because it's gonna help me draw some of the rest of the part. So from the modify menu, I'm gonna select the fillet command and I'll click on my four vertical edges on this part. And the fillet radius I'm gonna use is gonna be 0.25. And then I can hit enter to accept that. The next thing I wanna do is look at my print and I wanna start working on one of the recesses for one of the bold heads. So I'll put a sketch on the top face and I'll start working on the shape. I'm gonna start with the line command and I wanna anchor somewhere onto this line, anywhere but the end point or the midpoint. I wanna be anywhere between those two points. I just wanna start dragging to the right. I'm not clicking, I'm just moving my mouse. And when I'm happy with the location, I'm gonna click and hold. And now I can swing into an arc command. And when I'm done with the arc, I can let go. And now I can continue my line. I'll just move straight down and click. And you can see the basic shape that I have. This is a good time to take a look at your what you just drew and your sketch constraints. You can see I have a perpendicular constraint, which means this is a horizontal line. I have a perpendicular constraint here, which means this is vertical. I have a tangent constraint here, but I don't have anything here. So the first thing I want to do is get that fixed by adding a tangent between the arc and the vertical line. And now I can see that symbol, so I'm happy with that. I want, I know that this arc and this fillet are concentric. That's why I wanted to plop that fillet radius in there first. And so from the constraints dropdown, I'm gonna choose the concentric command and I'll click on this arc and this arc and that gets everything located the right way. And the last thing I have to do is put a dimension on this arc and that should fully define my sketch. And that dimension is gonna be 0.2. I want to take note of that dimension and say that I really like that dimension and I'm glad that whoever designed this part used that radius because I'm going to use a 3 8 inch tool 
to go through and rough and finish this pocket out. And the radius of the 3 8 inch tool is 0.1875. So that 0.2 radius is larger than the radius of my tool and it's gonna give me a better finish rather than just kind of jamming the, the cutter into that corner. I'll finish my sketch and I'll click on the home button and now I'm ready to extrude this. So let's look at the depth of this pocket. When we look at the depth of the pocket on the print, they don't give that dimension from the top down. Instead, they give the thickness from the bottom up. And I can certainly do the math and do 0.275 minus 0.174 and get a thickness of, or an extrusion depth of 0.101. I have another tool I can use as well. I can choose to do the extrude command and click on this face. And now I'm gonna choose two object for the bottom distance and I'll click on the bottom face of the part. And then you see I have an offset field. I can type in minus 0.174 in the offset field and I'm just kind of working the back way now. So if I start the dimension command and I click on that edge, you can see that the length of that edge is 0.174 just like the print. So I don't have to do any math. I can dimension this or make it the way the print shows. Now that I have that, I wanna put a hole in the center of this pocket. So I'm gonna start the hole command and I will choose this face sort of offset. Maybe I'll look at this from the top to make it a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna drag it until I drag to that point. And I can answer a few questions. This hole is gonna go all the way through the part. It's gonna be a clearance hole. And it's gonna be a clearance hole for an ANSI unified screw thread fastener. I'm gonna choose a socket head cap screw and it's gonna be a number 10 screw. And I get the 0.201 size that I want and I'll hit okay. If I wanna check this location, I know from the edge of the center both ways, it's gonna be quarter of an inch, so I can use the inspect command and click on that face in the center of the hole, I see 0.25. I can restart it and I can do the same thing between that face and that face, and again, I see my 0.25. So I've got that located exactly where I want it. Last thing I have to do for this particular recess is create two fillets on the vertical edges. So I'll rotate around to get a better angle on that. And I can type in 0.125. And there is what I want for my fillet radius. And that's one of those recesses complete. Now what I can do is I can mirror this to the other side instead of drawing it again. So from the create menu, I'm gonna select the mirror command. And I have to pay attention to what Fusion wants me to mirror. Currently, Fusion's asking me to mirror the entire body, which would give me a whole new solid. I wanna mirror features. And you can select these features on the model. In this case, I find it easier to click on the extrude, the hole, and the fillet in the timeline because I can just click on one of those things at a time and it highlights everything. Now I need to tell Fusion what the mirror plane is and I'm gonna choose this plane that bisects my part and I get a nice preview of what I want and I'll hit okay. And if you look carefully, we have problems. It didn't do all of the fillets. This has been something that's been reported to Autodesk and a ticket has been created. So hopefully in the future this gets corrected, but for now what we can do is we can edit this mirror feature and under the compute option we have some different things we can try. I'll try the optimize to see if that gives me a better result and if it doesn't, I'll try identical and see if any of those give me what I want. I hit okay and now I see that I get the fillets come across so I've got the left side done here. I'm gonna roll this part over and click on the bottom and uh, maybe I'll just rotate a little bit. I wanna create a sketch on that bottom face now Fusion turns the part square for me and I can go to the create menu and use my point command to create a hole. I'm just gonna drop a point somewhere on my part right there. Notice that I wasn't careful in the placement and I didn't try to put it directly on the red axis where I want it to live eventually. To get it to that point, what I'm gonna do is go to the horizontal vertical and I'm gonna select the origin and that point to get everything lined up. Now if I click and drag this, you can see if I try to move my mouse up and down, I can't move it off of that X axis. The last thing I have to do to get this into place is to add a dimension between the edge and the point and that dimension is gonna be 0.1875, and I'll hit enter. I'm fully black and defined, and now I can kinda of rotate around if I want to, and I'll use the whole command, and I'm gonna select that point. Now this time, I wanna do a distance. I don't want this to be a clearance hole, it's just gonna be a simple hole. The depth of the hole is gonna be 0.125, and the diameter of the hole is also going to be 0.125, and I can hit okay. 
and there's my hole. I'm looking pretty good. I just need to take all the stuff on this side and put it over that side so it looks like it's time to mirror again. And I could go to the create menu and find the mirror command, but it seems like I've done that a few times. So maybe this is a command I use a lot. I can click on the three dots and choose to pin to the toolbar. And now you can see I've got the mirror command pinned up on my toolbar. I'll choose mirror. It's set to features. So again, I'm just, I want the extrusion and the hole and the fillet and the mirror and the hole as what I want to mirror. And then now I'm gonna choose the plane that bisects my part the opposite direction. And it's set to adjust. I'm gonna guess this is gonna fail. It loses a fillet. I can come back and adjust that pattern one more time. Choose it optimized instead. And now we get all our fillets to carry over. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing I'm gonna work on is the revolved feature for the top and the bottom. And to do that, I wanna create a sketch on my front plane. When I'm looking at this now, I don't wanna see the front half of my part, so I can go over and use the slice command to slice off the part of the graphics that I'm seeing. So now I'm seeing the inside of the part, and then I need to reference these lines where if I start the line command, you can see Fusion's not finding them, so I need to project them in. From the create menu, I'm gonna choose project include and then project, and I can project these edges in one by one, or I can say just project the body for me and click on that. Now if I expand this out and turn off the bodies, you can see I get an outline of my part. I'm gonna start off by creating an arc, a three-point arc. I'm gonna choose somewhere on this bottom line, somewhere else on the bottom line, I'm gonna drag up. Now I want this point to be centered on the origin to make sure that this arc feature is centered along the width of the part. So I'll use the horizontal vertical constraint between that point and the origin. It doesn't matter which one you select first or second. I'm gonna start the dimension command and from this point to this point, if I look on my print, that dimension is 1.45 and I'll hit enter. 1.45, enter, there we go, There's a, there I got it. And then now I'm gonna dimension the radius of this. And again on my print, that radius is 4.236, I don't really know why that's the number for it, but it is. And now I can go and do an arc on the top. So I'm gonna say create arc, three point arc, somewhere on that line, somewhere on that line, kind of pull it up again. Again, it's not centered, so I'll use that same horizontal vertical between the center dot and the origin dot of my design to get that centered that way. And if you look on the top view of this print on the left hand side, it says dome centered on design, with concentric top feature of 0.275 thickness. So that's saying that this and this are concentric. So from the constraints menu, I will again use the concentric constraint between this arc and that arc. And then it gives me a radius value that I'm gonna type in. And the radius value they use for this is 4.511. So I'll dimension that and everything goes well. 4.511, you can see it's fully black and defined and I have my two dome features. If I wanna check if I do a dimension between the arc and the arc, you can see the value, it's gonna give me a driven dimension is 0.275, just like the note said, it's 0.275 in thickness, so I know that feature is correct. I need to do one more thing to make this work out. I wanna draw a line that's a center line between this origin point, and I'm gonna stop on this arc, and I'm gonna repeat that from the midpoint of this line to the bottom of the arc. Now, a lot of times what I see people do here is they finish the sketch, and then when we go and grab the revolve command, it makes it tough to grab the profile that you want. So a little trick you can do instead is if I go back and I clear my screen here, I'm just gonna switch back to a file and back. I don't know why it got stuck, but it did. If I right click and I say edit sketch, I can go back to my slice again, and now I can easily grab these two sections. At least this one is the one that I wanna grab. So while I'm in the sketch, instead of exiting the sketch, I can just move to the solid tab, and now I have access to all my solid modeling commands, which means I can start the revolve command, and it's really easy for me to grab that section, and then specify my access while it's still sectioned, and when I hit okay, it'll automatically unsection itself when we look below. There's my dome feature down there. Now I need to do the same revolve for the top, However, my sketch is gone, so what I have to do is go expand the sketch out and turn on the last sketch that I used. Now I can make use of that again by starting the revolve command. I'll pick on the area I want to revolve and then the axis I want to revolve about. This time it's gonna do a join. I can turn my sketch back off and now I have my dome top and bottom. If I look on the print, there is a half inch radius where this circle meets the flat face, so I'll start the fillet command and click on that edge. 
and my fillet radius is going to be 0.5. It'll put a little radius on there for me. So I'm happy with that. I also see that they have a note to chamfer everything all around. And I'm gonna do some of the chamfers smaller than what they dimension on the print. And I'm not gonna do all the chamfers modeled. I'm only gonna do the one around the very top edge. From the modify menu, I'm gonna choose the chamfer command and I'll click on this chain right here. And the chamfer width is gonna be 0.02 and I can hit okay. I'm gonna use cam to use to chamfer this edge and the bottom edge. So I'm just gonna leave those a square right now and that'll make it a little easier for me to go ahead and cam the part when I start adding the tool path. So that is the process that I would use to go and model this cylinder head. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to get your feedback on this. I guess I should start saying, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. If you find this content useful, it'd be great if you'd subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.